Just a warning that the following video contains violent images, scenes of sexual nature, and some elements of strong language that some viewers may find offensive, and so viewer discretion is advised. The main focus of this video is to look at transgressive video games. In order to provide insight on the phenomenon of transgressive video games, I will be focusing on three main elements. The first of these, and perhaps the most commonly asserted with video games, is violence within video games. After exploring the issue of violence, I will move on to explore sex within video games, before finally looking at elements of gambling within video games, which have started to appear in modern times. For anyone that may have been living under a rock their entire lives, a video game can be defined as a game played by electronically manipulating images produced by a computer program on a monitor or other display. Video games began to gain mainstream popularity in the 1970s, with the release of iconic games such as Pong in 1972. Perhaps one of the most iconic video games of all time was released in 1980, a game known as Pac-Man. Pac-Man shows the advancements in technology made just 8 years after the initial release of Pong. These early games, while extremely groundbreaking in their day, are a world away from video games of the present time. Fast forward over 40 years and it's clear due to the incredible advancements in technology that video games have become far more realistic for reasons such as the astonishing improvements in graphics. The following footage is from Gears of War 3, released in 2011, and the player is seen here running around slicing other players apart with a chainsaw, perhaps not something seen in everyday life. This is a prime example of how video games have become far more gory and perhaps shocking in recent times. These drastic changes in how realistic video games now are have led to many people attempting to draw a link between video game violence and real life violence. There are two video game franchises that I will focus on to explore the issue of violence within video games. These are the Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty franchises, which are two of the most popular video game franchises of all time, ranked respectively the 5th and 4th best selling of all time. It is largely down to their huge success that they have often been at the forefront of media attention due to the high levels of violence that is entailed within these games. Call of Duty is a first person shooter game based around warfare and the first game in the series was released in 2003. The first three installments in the franchise were all set in the Second World War before the developers decided to focus on Modern Warfare when they released Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare in 2007, closing the gap between the past and the present. Все все равно скоро сдохнете. Widely regarded to be the most controversial point in the history of the Call of Duty franchise came in 2009 with the release of the game titled Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The infamous mission in the game titled No Russian was at the centre of this controversy upon the game's release. The mission requires the player to play as an undercover terrorist and shoot large numbers of unarmed civilians in an airport. The mission came under a heavy amount of criticism, with several prominent British religious leaders condemning the mission. It was subsequently censored in several countries and removed entirely from the Russian version of the game. The build-up has been going on for some time, but not without controversy. Last week, some graphic scenes of violence from an airport massacre in the game leaked onto the internet, scenes we've chosen not to broadcast, prompting questions in Parliament about the content of video games. Actor Bill Murray, who voiced one of the characters in the game, said politicians had bigger issues to deal with. It's a film. Why don't the government 
talk about other things in Parliament and save our country and get, and get our country together, as opposed to worrying about uh, damn games. It does have an 18. I mean, the, the, the controversy revolves around an issue, the level three, which is basically you have to go in and participate in a massacre of civilians in an airport, and it's an integral part of the plot. And while other games let you do that, this one you, you're there. You either pull the trigger on the people, or at least you stand by and let it happen. Now, the developers say it's an 18-rated game, um, which is a fair point and it's true. But whereas with films that are 18, you know, there's a man in the box office that looks at you and says, "Well, Sonny, you can't come in." With video games, well, A, you can buy them online, and many online retailers aren't as thorough with checking ages as they should be. And, of course, even if they can't get it that way, they can download it from the Internet through piracy. So it is a lot easier for people to get hold of games, and the risk and the worry is and the concern is that actually people under 18 can get their hands on the game and play this and see this. Okay. As shown by the previous news clip, there has often been moral panic surrounding video game violence and the potential impacts it can have on children younger than the legal age limit of the game. However, research linking video game violence to real life violence has tended to be very inconclusive. You can make it, my friend. You always survive. More controversy was sparked in 2011 when Anders Breivik, the man responsible for 77 murders in Norway in July of that year, with many of his victims being teenagers, detailed in his 1,500 page manifesto titled 2083, A European Declaration of Independence, how he had used the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 video game to help him prepare for the attack. There is almost no doubt that over the years the Grand Theft Auto franchise has been the subject of even more criticism than the Call of Duty franchise. The ability to commit crimes in the game, such as vehicle theft and killing, for example the senseless killing of civilians and police that can be carried out in the game, are some of the main reasons it has come under criticism. In this clip the player is seen going to a weapon shop, buying ammunition and weapons, before driving to a strip club and carrying out the murder of a large number of people, and it is perhaps difficult to argue that there is not something quite profoundly shocking about this. Katz wrote about the archetypal street criminal, Eco and the Badass. The badass embodies the appearance of a mean and tough nature, a willingness to use violence, as well as alienation from the civilised society. This footage from Grand Theft Auto perhaps shows all the previously mentioned attributes to some extent, and this is perhaps a glorification of the badass and with it criminal behaviour. There have been many attempts to link the violence in video games to real life violence. An example of this comes in the form of school shootings in American schools where the relationship between the shooters and video games has been argued to be a factor in the shootings. Their attempts to link video game violence to the Columbine shooting that took place in 1999, as both Eric Harris and Dylan Claboid were avid fans of violent first-person shooter video games, such as Doom and Quake. Several of the victims' parents attempted to take legal action against the developers of the video games, but were unsuccessful in doing so. A more recent example of a similar case comes in the form of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting carried out by Nicholas Cruz. It was claimed by Cruz's friend that he spent long hours playing violent video games and in the aftermath of the shooting the governor of Kentucky argued that the United States should re-evaluate re the things being put into the hands of their young people, specifically quote unquote video games that he claimed to desensitise people to the value of human life. These attempted links are however problematic for several reasons. One of these are the popularity of video games, with an extremely high number of young people playing video games. It is likely that when a young person commits a crime, they have a history of playing video games. As well as that, young people committing these crimes have access to and the fascination of deadly weapons, and the killers committing these crimes are more interested in these weapons than real life violence than mere fantasy violence. The General Aggression Model, or GAM for short, developed by Anderson and Bushman in 2002, argues there is a link between video game violence and real life violence. The GAM states that violent video games have both short term and long term effects on players. In the short term, the games are a situational variable, causing an increase in aggressive cognitions, effects, and arousal. The long term effects are just hypothesis, as the research is relatively new. Anderson and Bushman hypothesized that video games influence behavior by promoting aggressive beliefs and attitudes, thus creating aggressive schema, aggressive behavioral scripts, and aggressive expectations. They also claim that video games desensitize individuals to aggression. Gentile et al. 2004 argued that violence in video games had an additive effect, meaning that those 
whom already are high in certain factors, mainly hostility, are much more at risk to become more aggressive due to influence by violent behaviour. Whereas subjects who are rated as low in hostility have been found to have almost no effect on their aggression levels when influenced by violent video games. Cartner and Olsen found in their work Grand Theft Childhood that some children that played violent video games claimed that helped them reduce stress and feel less aggressive afterwards. They argued that violent video games are not responsible for school shootings and that the games are being used as a scapegoat. Instead, they argued there are more important factors that lead to youth violence, and that by focusing on video games, people miss the big picture. Sex within video games is nothing new. The following footage is from Custer's Revenge, released in 1982, and although it is very dated by today's standards, it was highly controversial at the time. The aim of the game is for General Custer to dodge arrows in order to reach a Native American woman tied to a post. If successful, he could have sex with her and was rewarded points for doing so. However, this quickly sparked controversy as to whether he was raping her or if she was willingly participating. The makers of the game received many complaints and there were several attempts to sue the company. Although dated games like Custer's Revenge may seem quite ridiculous by today's standards, Elements of sex are still present in modern video game titles. The Grand Theft Auto series has not only been the subject of criticism due to its violent content, but also for its sexual content. The ability to go to strip clubs in the game, as well as pick up prostitutes and pay for sex with them, are the main reasons for this. This controversial depiction of women in Grand Theft Auto V caused three Australian women to set up a petition on Change.org, urging Target to withdraw the game, arguing that it had uh, arguing that it's a game that encourages players to murder women for entertainment. The incentive is to commit sexual violence against women, then abuse or kill them. They went on to argue that games like GTA V were grooming yet another generation of boys to tolerate violence against women. The women were successful in their cause as both Target and Kmart stores pulled the game after the position they launched gained more than 40,000 signatures. The argument by the three females is in many ways like the feminist objection to pornography, which argues that it promotes an objectified view of women and could lead to sexual violence and rape, argued by Andrea Dworkin in her 1981 work titled Pornography, Men Possessing Women. The final issue I will explore is the issue of gambling. This issue is relatively new compared to issues such as violence and sex within video games. The issue of gambling arises due to in-game purchases, where players buy with real money or in-game currency a random item or set of items, more termed loot boxes. Players have no guarantee of what they'll get, and no way to guide the game into giving them something they want. A prime example of this is FIFA Ultimate Team where players of the game can buy packs of football players to use in their online teams. These in-game purchases have been seen to be problematic, especially when children are playing the games that have elements of gambling in. In the past few years, there have been many cases emerging of children using their parents' credit cards to spend large sums of money on in-game purchases, with the parents often completely oblivious until receiving their credit card bills. Hello there. The case of EA Star Wars Battlefront 2, released in 2017, details how the elements of gambling within the game received such a severe backlash from the gaming community that EA had to change the game. Battlefront 2 was at the centre of controversy prior to its release, receiving, receiving unfavourable critical attention when its loot box monetization scheme was revealed during its open beta period, which many felt was a pay to win scheme, since some loot boxes were directly influenced multiplayer gameplay. EA caused further controversy before the game's full launch, when they revealed that many of the playable heroes in the game would be locked until the player had earned enough in-game credits over time, or spent money on microtransactions to unlock them faster. Many players saw the game's loot boxes, where real money is spent for a randomised item, a randomised item that could directly impact multiplayer competition, as a way of encouraging spending cash on in-game success. The controversy was so severe that EA pulled all in-game in in purchases before the game even launched and introduced a patch that revamped how progression worked within the game. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you found this somewhat interesting and that no one's died of boredom. <laughs>